I've had the great pleasure of painting Her Majesty five times. One was a big full-length one, and then two commissions came up to paint her simultaneously. And also, at that time, uh, there were two other uh, requests for her to sit. So actually, I was painting about four of her at the same time. Different dresses, different background. Um, and it was quite uh, amusing, really. It was sort of, which dress am I in today? The one behind me for the Rifles Regiment just came out of the blue. I have a tendency to paint the human being, if I can. And, uh, you know, I often say, the robes go on afterwards. The human being is there. I mean, mine is a, a, a reasonably informal one, with a formal background. She's sitting there looking, I hope, like I've painted her. That is the queen. I haven't inserted anything. I have made a statement about the woman sitting there. So we're standing in front of my portrait of the Queen here, which was commissioned by, for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in 2019. And it came on the back of me winning the BP Portrait Award the previous year, which sort of put me in the frame. So when I got the email, I sort of had to read it about five times, really, you know. And there's always an element of, I mean, obviously it's a great honour to be considered and, and asked to paint a monarch. Um, but also there's a great deal of trepidation and fear around the whole process because not, not every portrait of the Queen is, is greeted by the critics successfully. You know, it's, it can be a little bit of a poison chalice for an artist and I think you're very aware of that from the offset. But at the same time, it's probably a once in a lifetime opportunity for most artists. So, so of course you say yes, but you say yes, you know, with, with a bag full of mixed emotions really about the whole process. My commission to paint the Queen came about through a prize that was uh, sponsored by the Royal Society of Portrait Painters. And it was in, uh, I think, 1995. And I'd entered the, the, the exhibition, uh, the open submission, and just to get something exhibited, really. But in that year, it was not only a cash prize, which it is now, it was also a prize to paint somebody from public life. And uh, the identity of the sitter was kept secret. Uh, right up until the moment I got the phone call from the, uh, the, the, the then president, Daphne Todd. Uh, she phoned me at home. I had no idea. You know, I was just happy to get into the show. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. <laughs> My first sitting was the worst, I think, for me, because uh, I hadn't met the Queen. I, I, you know, I, I hadn't even been briefed on how to meet her or what the etiquette was. Uh, and I actually become quite ill uh, the f a few days before. I'd picked up some kind of food poisoning, but I had to go through with it because it was, you know, you, you can't really cancel the queen. She was also a bit of a moving target. She didn't really sit that still. So, um, and I wasn't really sure what I could say, you know, could I, uh, can, uh, I, so I actually asked Robert Fellows, the, uh, the, the uh, then private secretary, uh, if I could ask the queen to sit still. And he said, yeah, well, you're the boss, you know, you, you, you go ahead and uh, tell her. And so I did, uh, I did, I plucked up courage and I said, could, ma uh, mom, could you just stay still for just a, f for a few minutes while I just work on one aspect of your face? And, uh, but then again, she was off she, uh, a few minutes later she, uh, and I think I only had one chance to do that. So uh, that was my impression anyway. The Queen was already quite, she was 93, 94 years old when I, when I was commissioned to paint this portrait. And then by the time, and they were really cutting back on, on sittings at that stage. So I had been told by her diaries that I might only get one sitting. And then I, I begged for a second sitting, which I eventually got. There was a seven month wait between the first and the second sitting. And the second sitting happened literally, I think about a week before we all went into lockdown. So COVID was just kind of beginning to unfold around the world. So the rest of the painting process was finished in lockdown. It just, and maybe people were just desperate for good news because the whole world had been in lockdown. This footage just went all over the world um, in a way that I hadn't envisaged at all. So suddenly, yeah, I was just, I was just sort of contacted by media from all over the world. And, and I think actually that was, that was when I realized what a truly global person she is, you know, that she's actually 
um, th the entire world is fascinated by Queen Elizabeth II. She's, she's really um, probably the most famous person in the world. I think that's when the penny dropped, actually, for me. Um, so that was all very extraordinary, you know. And yeah, I just got media attention from everywhere. Of course, when you get a commission to paint the, any of the royals, it, it, just commercially, of course, prestige and uh, uh, you can fool a lot of the public a lot of the time. I mean, you're no better a painter the day after you've painted the royals than you were before. Yes, it's very good for the career, and you get the, um, you get the title Royal Portrait Painter and all this sort of thing, yes. Um, you mustn't let that affect you. And it's 25 years since I painted that, and I feel now that I'm part of that kind of lineage going right back, you know, you know, to Van Dyck and Holbein. I don't think I'm on their kind of level, but I, I'm part of that. And it's that whole historical kind of process and history uh, of painting, really, which I'm quite proud of, really, in a, in a way. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't, you know, it's, it's something that's really very significant. It's, it's just an extraordinary honour, really, and privilege to, to be asked to paint a monarch in the first place, but also to, to realise that you are part of this continuity of art history. And again, that, that, that dawned on me during my first sitting, actually. I thought, my gosh, this is what artists have been doing for hundreds of years. And that's, that's quite a thought and quite a sense of responsibility, really, that you take to your task.